Welcome to the Bloody Screen Podcast, episode number 24. Yeah, we're almost to 25. Yay! But 24 means nothing, so we're not going to celebrate 24. Um, yay! Oh. No celebrating, Can, Brandon. Can't it be a 25 pre party? <laughs> okay, just this once. Woo! Uh, I almost want to. I kind of wish I could cue and everybody dance now for like the next five minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, I could, but I don't really feel like fucking with the audio that much. Yeah, I know. Oh, Brandon, you're kind of fucking lazy when he comes doing this. Oh, I don't feel like fucking doing it, so shut up. Um, yeah, so how you going? Uh, well, I seen you yesterday, Nick, so I kind of know how you're doing. Um, you know nothing! <laughs> how was your sandwich, though, Nick? Here, I can, I can ask you. Tasty. Was it tasty? What was it? It was the blood of my enemies, and also Christ. <laughs> that was also that's pretty tasty. Actually, I made a good grilled cheese sandwich yesterday. It was fucking grilled cheese with bacon. I never thought to do it before, and it was delicious. I was like, God damn it! I feel like I've been wasting all my other grilled cheese sand. See, I take pride in how I make my grilled cheese sandwiches because I make them either with multiple different cheeses, or I do classic Velveeta, which is always tasty, or I do. Classic Velveeta with some bacon in it, which oh man, it's just oh I, I dude I I that's like one food I besides grilling you know the one food I can make on the stove where I'm just so proud of myself afterwards. It's just, uh, at least you actually make it on the stove. Do what? So at least you actually make it on the stove. What? How else do you make it? I, I've seen people use like the the panini presses and stuff, and just you know thirty second just sandwich press. It, no, you need the you need the stove because the, uh, the part of the great grilled cheese sandwich is to get a nice thick piece of butter and you know get it all on the outside of the little pan. I'm getting the ivory. And then you get well, that actually, nice I put butter. it on the I'm, I put it on the bread, but oh, uh, you can put it on the bread or the pan. I put it on the pan. Bread, I also agree, it works fairly well because then you all you guaranteed that buttery crust. The buttery crust of the toast that you're grilling your cheese on. Is so amazing. And now ever since I watch Archer sometimes, I just like want to go up to like my mom sometimes and just grill me a cheese and just stand there all like serial killer like. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Nikki G, what have you been up to? I'm not sure my life has been exciting as a uh, real cheese sandwiches and cheese sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I kind of just got back from a trip, you know, just from Montrose, hanging out with family, went to shooting range, which it's good because, you know, apparently Yemen has just gone to shit. Um, hey, Nick, real quick, you were just making a yes. joke before we started recording about Nikki G being here, a redneck. You just proved it. <laughs> like, yeah, we went on vacation. I went up and shot some stuff. And Wait, you were in Yemen? No, I'm just, I'm just saying the news oh. came out. You know, all that shit. Uh, alrighty, and, and for everyone who asked me, I'm doing fine as well. Um, <laughs> um, nobody right. cares. I know, nobody <laughs> asked you! Um, for those people who might have noticed, we did not record a movie thing podcast because none of the hosts were free that day, so I said, well, fuck it. it that's our least popular podcast, so what do I care? Um, yeah, so, yeah, next Sunday we may or may not, depending... Basically, the one, the only person who's really guaranteed on each podcast is most likely Nikki G. And if he's unavailable, most likely everyone else happens to be unavailable that day. So, fuck it. But I was happy to hear Nikki G got out of the house. So, yay! <laughs> <laughs> the world is scary. <laughs> All right, guys, let's start with the top five. What do you, what do you want to get into? We should, do we want to get to the global top five, the Europe top five, the U.S. top five? Global, global, Okay, we're global. doing the global top five, which is good because we can actually talk about different games. Because um, I was kind of worried when I saw the U.S. top five and it said Minecraft on it and it made me cry a little bit. <laughs> and I was like, seriously, it came back? But this is the top five for July 27th, 2013. Um, so, yeah, that's about last week or so. Um, so, let's start out with number five. Number five is Mario and Luigi Dream Team for the 3DS. As you can tell, you know, I, I see like pictures of that at Walmart, and I got to that I show Luigi dreaming. Yeah, that's got to be Mario's biggest freak nightmare. An army of Luigi's rolling after him in a giant ball. Wait, is that literally what it is? I'm, I'm, 
That's what they show up for, like, the artwork. Huh. That's, you know, I really just hope that this turns into a Mario AG Inception style, where they're going, like, a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream, and they just keep going deeper and deeper into, like, Luigi's psychic, until he finally gets to the point where they find out how jealous Luigi was of Mario the entire time, and that's where the army of Luigi's come from, and they just try to kill Mario and the dream world, and then if they finally succeed, and then... Oh, the rest, easy know, they, there, easy there, Tiger. <laughs> well, they're actually already making the uh, Luigi Brothers or something like that, where it's actually like a, you know, it's like a Super Mario Brothers, but it's with Luigi, just Luigi, not Mario. Luigi, so, everyone's a favorite character yeah. if you were a younger sibling. It, it, it really is a lot of people's favorite character, which is funny as hell. I know. I was like, why does Mario get so much love? Because I know a lot of people are... Or big Luigi fans. Because those people who like Luigi were the younger siblings who had to be player two. I'm to think. One, yes. The second one, I don't know. Um, yeah. I've never... Or they're retarded. Yeah, either way, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Honestly, I've never been a Mario fan, so I didn't really give a shit about any of it, so... Um, yeah, even in Super Smash Bros., they're like, you want to be Mario? I'm like, fuck no, why would I want to be Mario? I'm going to pick someone who's cool. Um, alright. Number four is a game I'm currently playing, and it's fucking awesome. Um, it's for the, it's the Vita version of Dragon's Crown. Uh, so far, you know that's also number two, so we're not so we don't have to talk about number two. Uh, Dragon's Crown. Uh, Nick, you played a lo- you played that on our little bloody time. What'd you think of Dragon's Crown? It, it was. It, I mean, it probably help if we paid attention to the story and actually did uh, something in the game other uh, than just rush forward, no, I, fight I, the dungeon. Nick, rush I forward over the game because I was like, oh, we totally just skipped over the story because who gives a shit. No, literally, who gives a shit? I was playing that story, I'm like, oh my god, this is just, this is your most run-of-the-mill RPG I've ever, like, this is the most basic RPG story you've ever seen. They're like, oh, you, you, you must go on this quest now to do this, oh, now you must go on this quest now to do this, and here's the evil brother of the king, like, you gotta be kidding me, this is boring as fuck that I, I started pressing X. I mean, the gameplay is fun as hell, and I, that's what I enjoy, is the gameplay, like, finding loot. Um, all that stuff, but the story, I couldn't give two fucking shits about. Um, so I say, I, and I do agree, I have to also say, it is more fun with, like, when I was playing with you and Dustin, especially when we just started to get to that point where we started just knocking each other halfway across the map. <laughs> I don't know what the, each other is, it's you two knocking me. I, I disagree. The dwarf Thorf was getting his ass kicked by all of you quite a bit. I did not... Do anything except for that first time because I didn't know what that and button did. Unless was just a stealthy motherfucker and hit me, and you just happened to be standing where I got hit, then bravo, Dustin. You and me at the same time, there, genius. I, he never. I never. Dustin, saw was, you and Dustin always attacked. Anyways, or, um, yeah, Dragon's Time. We will have a review sometime, and I did tr- convince Dustin to get back and doing a brew. So, Nikki G, kind of lucky start. Yes. You don't have to worry about doing a review with that one. <laughs> Yeah, one, but we got two others that are in my game fl- or in my room right now that we still I still got to get around the plane. So, <laughs> <laughs> you're a monster. I, I'm surprised how early that game came out because this is uh, July 27th, which you know it didn't come out in America yet. So this this clearly is Japanese selling. Um. All right. You couldn't tell by the girl with the fucking, like, double K-sized tits. Oh, dude, they're, they're everywhere. I'm just like, good God, the only one who has normal-sized breasts is the fairy. I'm surprised she's not popping out of her chest, because I even got some characters that were, like, um, you know how they get the AI, AI character of Brandon? Well, yes. when you play by yourself, you get other AI characters, and the funny thing is this large-breasted woman who's wearing, like, a thong. I'm like, are you guys serious right now? You wonder Large- why women call you guys sexist sometimes. Larger than Bimbo? Uh, about the same size. Actually, all women kind of have the same bimbo size that breasts. Oh my cord. Which... What? Sorry, the cat was chewing on my headphone cords. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's having a fight with himself. Stop it! No, no, stop it! And you just used to see him, fu- you hear fall him down. Go through a glass window. Uh, yeah, I know. Stop eating my cord, damn you! All stop it! We're just gonna hear, we're just gonna hear, and then, oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch! <laughs> Just hear the mics drop and him pacing after the cat the rest of the time. Get back here, you little shit! <laughs> uh, um, number three is a game we've talked about a lot, and it's it's a good game, but it's no surprise it's number three. The Last of Us. Ooh. Yeah, Nick, you beat that game yet? No. Oh, well, you 
you'll give us your full thoughts on it sometime because I picture it'll be in the top five by the time you beat it anyways. <laughs> Um, and number one is a game that I've never played, but I hear good things about 3DS. It is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, that might just be a Jeff release, or it might be a, uh, or American, too. I don't know. I don't know dig about 3DS games, because I don't own one. Um, yeah, so Phoenix Wright, the Ace Attorney of Law, you know. Hey, you know Why don't they make... I guarantee, give, give it, a, like, two more months. I guarantee po- Pokemon X and Y will be on those charts for a while. Especially global. Oh, yeah. Well, it, depending which one we choose. Of course, the global ones, definitely. Because Japan still has a big market. Um, you know, the video game market. They, you know, with uh, unlike Americans, the Japanese people, in my opinion, tend to buy more than this, the same fucking game. Because if I clicked over to the U.S. one, what would we see? The fucking Minecraft. Oh, and Animal Crossing. Whoa, and the last of us. And probably Americans. Black Ops. Uh, no, Black Ops still no. Actually, Black Ops has went down to number 10, oddly enough. Um, but it just shows that a lot of Americans do not... Well, I understand that not everyone can afford a new game all the fucking time. But Jesus Christ, people. Seriously? Like, fucking Minecraft still? you got to be fucking kidding me. This is ridiculous. I've, I've grown to hate it because I'm doing this top five shit. Because I'm getting so annoyed at seeing... <laughs> I know I'm getting you for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. Uh, you Nick, you, Nicky G, you forget you. I know where you live. <laughs> right. That's true. No, do you, you would not rec- yeah, I would not recommend you give me that for Christmas. <laughs> I will. I will come to your house and maybe uh, eat your you food. Know, maybe do. Th- I will come to your house and eat all the food while you. <laughs> can't- <laughs> Fear the mar- uh, the wrath of Brandon. <laughs> um. I don't even know how this counts as news, but, you know, fuck it, whatever. There wasn't really dick for news going on. But, um, elaborate plans to, uh, for the end of Assassin's Creed are at hand. And basically, basically this whole article in the news is talking about how uh, Ubisoft is in, it t- saying how they're going to continue to do Assassin's Creed and don't decide to stop. That's saying, I'm like, well, no fucking <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> um... They, <laughs> I literally, that was like majority of this article. Never been spoken. Like, they're like, oh, um, yeah, we're just going to keep going until we decide to stop. But uh, it just it's just kind of one of those things where uh, they're basically, they're kind of, it is the end of the, uh, the run of Assassin's Creed. Which all I can say is, really, no fucking shit. What do you got up to? Six games now? I used to stop that count bad liberation. Game. Oh, yeah, seven games in this one fucking universe? I mean, holy crap, well, how much well, can you talk about? Think about Final Fantasy. They're up to fucking, like, 80 games now. Okay, but I, I, Final Fantasy is one thing, because it's not a continuous story. It is a continuous story. A difference. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Only, only, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Do I, have to, do I have to explain to you how Final Fantasy works? The only Final Fantasies that are continuous is a 13 and 13-2. That's the only time... It's, it's all continuous, continuous. it's just story. not exactly linear. No, it's not. It's no. The Final Fantasy one and two had nothing to do with each other. Four, seven had nothing to do with ten. They have nothing to do with each other. They're just similar universes, different characters. These ones are either they're all dealing with Desmond. They all have that continuous story with Desmond. They may have different main characters in the past, except for the three with uh, you know with Ezio. But for the most part, it's all been with Desmond. And even four is going to be with Desmond, unlike Final Fantasy. But, uh, well, I, I obviously know, it's going to be with Desmond. It's his fucking story. No, they could have ended Desmond. They could have changed the story, or they could have just never had Desmond to begin with. They could have done a lot of different things, but instead they're going to continue seven fucking, or actually six games, because Liberation's with a, someone else, which they could have been doing. Um, six games with the same character. I, I, They're dragging this shit on, and all I can say is really tie this shit up. I, I'm excited for the pirate... But I'm not excited to see what stupid fucking shit they do with Desmond. I'm sorry, the Desmond story just annoys me. I'm just, I don't care. I couldn't, I don't know, do you, any of you guys care about the Desmond part of the story? I care about Desmond's story. Okay. Seeing, Nikki G, do you seeing as I only played one game a minute, I've seen some videos on the other ones, but for the most part, not really. Alright. Well, fuck you uh, too. I, <laughs> yeah, two against one, our opinion counts. <laughs> if Justin um, was in here, he'd so be the neutral party because he doesn't like Assassin's Creed. Has he ever played him? Um, I don't think so. I know he had, he bought, <laughs> he like, 
he got Brotherhood for Christmas or something and never even opened the package. <laughs> um, from what they're also kind of uh, basically, from what they're actually at the end of this thing, but it's the Eurogame article, and what they're kind of saying to this is what they think is going to happen, and I agree with is when they we stop seeing Assassin's Creed games is when they stop selling. That's when we'll stop make, uh, seeing them being made. Once they start seeing them drop it, it won't happen. Yeah, once they start dropping in revenue, and it can happen, people will eventually get sick and tired of those games. That's what. No. Yes, they will, Nick. Not if they keep the story as decent as it is. It, it, okay, you have to admit, three kind of got pretty shitty towards the end. Yeah, yeah, but overall, it was a good story. Uh, Okay, overall, the Connor story was decent. The character of Connor was kind of bullshit, but whatever. The Connor story I liked, but the and, Desmond... And, 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 not everyone is as cynical and hate-filled as you are. I'm cynical and hate-filled. I have played every single Assassin's Creed from beginning to end. I like majority of them. One is meh, three is... I like the gameplay more than I like the story of three. Um, you know, I like the Ezio version of the Assassin's Creed. That's all. And yet, you, it took you forever to beat two. I, okay, I like the Brotherhood and other ver, uh, relations Ezio story. Uh, See, this is what happens when you play games out of order. And you don't like the first ones. <laughs> that is, uh, it, people who don't know me, yes, that happens to me. But I play a school uh, game, and I go back to the original game, I tend not to like the original game as much. I mean, it, I'm not going to say I totally fucking hate it, but it turns into one of those things where I'm just like, oh... Yeah, this is... Yeah, like Uncharted um, or Dead Space? Well, okay, no, 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 no. Uncharted 2 is much better than Uncharted 1. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying Uncharted 1 is a great game, too. It's okay of a game. It has a lot of flaws. They fixed a lot of them in 2. But had and you SP2, played Uncharted 1 first, you would have thought it was fucking amazing. Yeah, and Dead Space 2 also. And a better, <laughs> I'm just picking up the better versions of these. <laughs> yes, rip and tear, rip and... <laughs> wow. <laughs> In the same uh, kind of game. Oh no, Dead Space Two actually had a story, not just go to point A to point B, go to point B to point C. Dead, Dead Space, Space One had a story. It was no, you fixing didn't. the fucking ship. That is boring as fuck. Wait, oh, you okay, you got you got to get like train. near the end of the game when they start throwing the twists at you. Then it gets a fucking decent story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, may right. may I say something? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Yes, you may. <laughs> but uh, basically, the director of Assassin's Creed Four says, basically, quotes: "We have an idea of where the end is, what the end is." But he says, "Overall, the Ubisoft's overall boss announced that we are a yearly title. We ship once a year, and depending on the setting, depending on the fans we want, we've given our- ourselves room to fit more into the arc. But there is an end. So, so again, it probably will be depending on how much you sell and if this thing slows down, but." The thing is, it's a yearly title. We'll probably see quite a bit more of these. Yeah, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon either. As you know, it, this is turning into uh, you know our yearly November thing where you'll we'll see our Call of Duty, we'll see our Battlefield or uh, or uh, Medal of Honor, or and then we'll see our you know basically each big company is going to release their one big blockbuster game to do whatever. And we may see that one really great one that's going to be like our Skyrim of the year or something, you know. Um. And then here's a good one I found about how the Wii U has been... Uh, Nintendo has lost uh, three, uh, $387 million last year financially. All I can say is, motherfuckers, you guys have made a terrible mistake. Um, like, seriously, you guys did well with the Wii because old people and young children had it, but you can't convince people to buy another one because... And this article goes on to talk about how their marketing was just fucking stupid. I agree with it. Uh, it talks about how uh, just naming it, first of all, just naming it Wii U was a terrible mistake. Because your average non-hardcore you know, hardcore gamer who doesn't read up on this shit, who doesn't know about it, they see Wii U, they automatically think it's an accessory to the Wii. So they're not going to get it. And then you also have it look similar to the Wii, then people are also like, oh, this is just the Wii just with another accessory. And I agree with that. I was like, that was not going to get a lot of people into it. You could have called, you should have called it the, you know, Nintendo, I don't know, Nintendo tablet, and Nintendo, you know, something, something good. You know, I don't know. You could have called it something other, uh, something else. But, uh, and then it doesn't also help that uh, they're trying to describe this as a hardcore gaming console. And then they 
you know, what they do is they don't have a lot of third party. They they started out pretty strong with the third party. They're like, oh, look at all these third party games that you've already played. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, and then they then they just stopped. I mean, can you guys think of the last Wii U third party game that you thought saw? Mm. Nope. Yeah. Uh, I, and then you know, and not only. T- you know, then they make also the bigger mistake of barely catching up with today's consoles. They just now caught up, and now this October, no, actually no, this November, we're getting all new ones that are way going to be able to, you know, be like a hundred times better than what we got. So all I can say is Nintendo, what the fuck you guys doing? Um. You know, and it, it, I love in this article they actually have the big letters. People won't buy a console if there are no games for it. And, you know, Nintendo has had to learn this lesson a couple of times. Like with the 3DS, a lot of people didn't buy the 3DS because for a while there had no fucking games. And this has had to happen over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, the original 360 didn't really have great games. PS3 did not have great games when it first came out. None of these ga- I mean... I, finally, Sony and Microsoft are learning with their launch titles. They're like, oh, fuck yeah, we're releasing with Call of Duty. We're releasing with all these games. Yeah, sure, you can buy them with your original consoles because they don't want to lose out on the sales. But if you get an Xbox One or a PS4, you're going to have great games to play with it. Um, I don't know. What you guys thought on... Oh, I'm back, baby. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> that entire thing. Uh, Nikki G, what's your thoughts on this whole Wii U losing money? Good. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know what they're thinking. I mean, honestly, I mean, look how I'm not even sure how how big do you think the younger audience is for video games? Uh, the, okay, I don't know, but like when I was a younger kid, and I had maybe like, one or two a year. What? I said maybe one or two games a oh, year. Oh yeah, with that yeah, and most of the time their parents. Uh, I don't know about how some people's parents are, but like if you live in a normal middle class family. And you're like, mommy, daddy, I want a Wii U for Christmas. They're like, what's wrong with the Wii? That's that's exactly the argument they give you. They're like, well, what's wrong with the Wii? Isn't that just the Wii U? Is that the same thing? Because no one knows. The kids aren't reading up on this. Well, it, no, no, no. unless you're a hard, unless you're like us, and you actually, you know, you kind of look up on how everyone's, and you read the news, or you hear about it all the time, then you don't know big about what's going on. And it's just kind of those things where most parents aren't going to go out and buy a three hundred dollar console just for the shit and giggles. I mean, I don't even know how... The younger audience isn't going to get a lot of the Xbox 360 or Xbox One and PS4s. I mean, that's going to be for people like us, the older people from, you know, I want to say about 16 to 30. That's that's their demographic right now. And that's why I have to say PS4, uh, Sony and Microsoft are kicking, uh, kicking Nintendo's ass in America. And the only reason why Nintendo's doing good in Japan... Is because because it's Nintendo. Well, Japanese people love handheld consoles. Uh, they're more. They don't really believe because a lot of Japanese people. It's nothing that, like it's not like oh they're different. Like in their cult, in their way of playing video games, they like to, they're on the go a lot. So they love the. Also, you know, J- Japan really loves Nintendo because well, Nintendo's from well, that's Japan. They, they, I mean, I'm not saying they don't. Uh, any of them don't play their Sony and uh, uh, or their Wii's or anything. They don't have home consoles. They just prefer to play the handhelds. And that's why the 3DS and DS is doing fairly well, but the Wii U is just tanking like a motherfucker. Um, so it's it's really turned into that. They're uh, really at the end of the article. They're kind of saying, hopefully, uh, Nintendo's banking on the new Zelda and Smash Bros. And that hopefully that's what gets up their revenue. But I don't know. Because that's basically their revenue yeah, that, nowadays. Well, that's, that's what that's the only thing that people bought for the Wii was their first party titles because their third party titles fucking suck. Um, Nick, if you had the money, say if you had a lot of, if you had a decent amount of money, um, and you, I don't know, you a Zelda fan. Yeah. Would you ever buy a Wii U for that new Zelda? If you had a decent job and maybe you could afford it. If I could afford it? Okay. Yes, but only to hold me off until the PS4 comes out. Okay, okay, I was about to ask, I was going to throw in another, uh, thing there, I'd be like, okay, say if you got this Wii U, you had a... Okay, say you could only have two of the three consoles that it would be out. You, we would not be on that, hey, would it? So you would get an Xbox One and PS4, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah me too. Because you know me, I, I love to have two web cameras watching me at all times. Well, PS4 does not come with a web camera, so you're happy. Um, 
Yeah, because I, I, that's something I respect what PlayStation's doing. They just dropped the whole PlayStation move. They're like, you know, fuck it. Who cares? No one cares about motion gaming. No one wants no, that. I don't know about you guys. I don't like motion gaming. So, yay, I'm happy. I, I mean, except for, like, if you're at a friend's house you know, or, like, a little party or something, you play Just Dance. Just Dance, yeah. That's the only acceptable I thing. I remember we've done that. Dancing games are the only acceptable thing. Uh, you, you, like, you know, you know, Star Wars Connect. No, fuck you. That game was horrible. I never played that. I could, Don't. but I never did. Um, I or, and I never played it, but looking at like Ghost Recon Future Soldier Connect, that looked horrible. Well, the Connect version of Ghost uh, Ghost Recon Future Soldier just kind of made you feel like Tony Stark because you could take apart the guns, put them back together, put do stuff. That's all it did. And just same, it was kind of a gimmick thing, just like with the Mass Effect Three Connect thing, the feature they had where you just say the words that Shepard would say. And I say, well, no, why would I say the words when I could just press A? <laughs> It's kind of like, you know, before the Kinect came out, and like, for uh, Rainbow Six Vegas games, you could actually, like, plug in your mic and speak the commands to your teammates. Oh, yeah. Which was horrible, because they never did what you oh, said. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you know. Hey, stay back. Go up ahead and breach the room without you. You got it. Well, yeah, I played uh, another Tom Clancy game that was End War, and which you would think... Yeah, that was... You would true, think that a game where you could command your troops... With just your voice, that would be perfect. You'd be like, oh, yeah, Tank Squad or Squad 1. You just assigned them to Squad 1, 2, 3, 4, or all troops. Do this. But it was so unresponsive, and just it, would just, it wouldn't work. It was just like you you were trying to say, okay, uh, Squad 1, go to uh, Checkpoint B. They Sometimes they wouldn't listen to you, or they'd be like, uh, and eventually I just got pissed off, and I'd be like, hey, uh, Squad 1, go fuck yourself. Hey, fuck you. Hey, Russian assholes, you go to hell. And I just get mad because nothing would work. So I just bring up the controller and just play like that. You know, it, uh, nothing worked for you, but at least the game worked for you. What, it wouldn't work at all with the voice command or what? No, like, I legitly could not play that game. Did you? Um, yeah. Did you just have a bad copy of it or I'm, something? That My Xbox didn't <laughs> like it. Because you, you know how, like... Some Xbox original games that don't like to be played on the 360. Yeah. That was one of them. Well, no, End War was a 360 game. Not the one I got. No, they might have released it for both. I don't. Huh. I I know my version was the 360 game, and I bought it. Oh no, mine was the Xbox uh, original. I bought it because I was at the time I was really into strategy games. I was in my strategy game junkie. I was playing the Command and Conquers. I was playing. Battle Familiar 2, I was playing, you know, I, I was just being a junkie about it. I suck at them, but I just like seeing my troops and get commanding them. But, anyways, um, we actually have some questions this week um, from our pal Jason. And first of all, Jason, you, you say sorry about last week you didn't have time to write before work. Dude, dude, you never have to apologize for not writing to this shit. Don't, you're not obligated to do shit, really. Um, <laughs> Don't listen to him. Right. <laughs> right like your life depends on it, Jason. <laughs> I know does. Nick's going to run his IP address. He's going to be like, I'm going to find out where you live. You're going to keep writing questions even for shows that we don't have, even though it's only a Friday show. <laughs> um, so he has some good ones. Uh, we'll just go with number one. Oh, wait. Hey, before we start, Nikki G, do you have any news? Uh, Just some small bits, right. nothing. Well, let's get- We'll Too do big. Years, like we'll do, do a couple years real quick because we're not even a half hour yet. So, all right. All right. Well, base, first small piece of news: uh, Star Wars Battlefront. It's gonna. It got pushed back to 2015. Oh. No, damn it! Life's not worth living anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, maybe we'll see. You know, because it's gonna come out around the same time as the new Star Wars. Maybe we'll see a tie-in or something, or at least you know, maybe see some new Jedi's out there. In the game, but uh, that was a big. Were well, you guys the uh, big fans of the first two? Um, dude, Fuck I yeah. put like almost two hundred hours into that for a second game. Like I played the ever living shit. I I played every version of. The, okay, so they have many modes of that game, like with the Galactic Conquest and such. Um, with Galactic Conquest, I played every single version of them. I played over friends' houses. I I played the ever living shit out of that game. I even played the mode a lot of the times where you just played as the heroes and villains. Of the Star Wars universe. I mean, it was just so much fucking fun. And before Xbox Live shut down the original Xbox thing, I would go online and fight, you know, play against people and realize, wow, I'm not as good as I once thought. (laughs) (laughs) 
Dude, try having that shit on oh, PSP. God. I actually, you know, I always wanted to play the PSP versions of the game, but I don't know. You could tell me if they wor- worked or not. Yeah, they worked. There's hell. I, 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 as far as I could tell, there's probably just the exact same thing. Just you know, same for console, but just on a PSP and handheld. So it's just you know, wherever I went, you could just fucking play that shit and. Yeah. You know, it, this is crack. It's like, you know, as people have pointed out, and I think even we have them once, it's really just Battlefield meets Star Wars. I mean, that's all it is. And you're just like, oh my god, because you get the vehicles, and we get you get vehicles, you get airplanes. My favorite thing was always playing on Hoth. I don't know about you guys. Playing... Oh, dude, I love oh, playing, yeah, playing on Hoth. Oh, yeah, Hoth as the Empire, and then you could get in one of those big old AT, ATTs. And then... You- AT. Yeah, AT&T. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get one of those, and just, oh, dude, you just walk and just demolish things, and most people can't even take it. Yeah. I remember I was playing against, it was like a four-on-two four, on two match, and I got in one of those, and my buddy was doing something else, and the other two friends were like, they were just stra- trying to strategize. It doesn't help they were all using the same screen, so they're like, you know, I could hear everything they were saying, but they were just trying their best just to try to figure out how to take the damn thing out. They tried to fly around, but they didn't fucking... And uh, they just tried, you know, shooting rockets at it, but it takes, like, an ass load of punishment. It was just, oh, I, I fucking love that. Yeah. It's, and snow speeders. I've always been a fan of snow speeders. So being able to drive a snow speeder oh, yeah. was awesome. And then it, Did I say snow speeder? And um, the Jedis. Being a Jedi was just awesome. Just going in the midst of a battle and just, you know, it just demolishing enemies. Yeah, but I, w- I wish they had more than the... Two same powers. Sure. Uh, well, it depends which Jedi you pick. Every Jedi had different, uh, two different abilities. Like, you know, Vader couldn't use electric, but he could choke people, which was, in retrospect, pretty fucking useless. Uh, and um, uh, he could throw his lightsaber, but Sidious could, uh, you know, use lightning, which was very useful, and throw his lightsaber. You know, they all had little, slightly different abilities. Um, a guy I played with, he, he found out Han Solo was one of the best heroes to be because he had range. And he was pretty tough to take out. So, yeah. Um. Uh, I think my favorite moment <laughs> was when, uh, I think it was the first one, and I was one of those, uh, the droids, the blue ones, that yeah. little guns in the, in the wrist. Well, basically, I was on, a uh, Tatooine, and there was a little Sarlacc pit, and Mace Windu was coming after me, so I shot the ground next to him with a rocket, he flew up, the Sarlacc pit grabbed him and nice. pulled him in. yeah. Um, well, you know one of my greatest moments in the first Battlefront was when you get to play uh, the droids and you just get to kill Gungans for a good five, ten minutes. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Oh, and then towards the end of that Battlefront, where you get to go to uh, Endor and you can kill Ewoks for five to ten minutes. Um, yeah, I really, I really like killing those little bastards that Lucas really just threw in there for no fucking reason. Um, he threw them in there for toys. Well, yeah, true. Toys and their cute little animals or funny little gimmicks to have the kids laugh at. Oh, isn't Jar Jar? Fuck off. Um, cute little animals that don't even have a name in the movies. They don't call me walks in. The- oh yeah, they don't. They never once say the word they Ewok. Um, Nikki, Nikki G, you got any other news? Last news story. Well, basically, a small one. Just uh, if you don't have a Xbox Live Gold account. You can't use the DVR or Skype on Xbox One, which doesn't affect yeah, me at all. It won't affect any of us at all. <laughs> that we're all using PS4, but um, dude, I don't. I know like one person getting the Xbox One, and to them, I say they're a damn fool. No, it's oh, Bacchus. Okay. He's a fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> uh, well, he gets he's getting it for fucking Halo. I was like, dude, really, really. Are you kidding me? You're not even getting it for the like original Halos that were good. You're gonna go with the uh... stop. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. I know you weren't talking to me. I just the damn cat. Um, uh, yeah, you're getting it for the Halo. Oh, fuck that. But you know, Xbox Live is like that now. You can't use Netflix. You can't use Crackle. You can't use you can't use anything if you don't have Xbox Live or you have a gold membership. Believe me, I know. I refuse to. I refuse to give them money. Just so I can have the basic shit uh, PlayStation gives me for free. So, yeah, you know. And then when I understand PlayStation Plus is, uh, you have to be a PlayStation Plus subscriber for the next console generation to play online. But they don't, uh, they don't get rid of the your ability to use Netflix or anything like that. Just because they they added more to their online, 
I was like, I'm all for that, being that I'm already a PlayStation Plus subscriber, so I'm all for that. Um, plus, PlayStation Plus was already giving me free games before they decided they were losing money, Xbox. Fuckers. Um, anyways, yeah, uh, let's get into some, qu- let's get into this, you know, Jason's questions. Uh, alright. Jason, Jason, Jason. In the Grand Theft Auto 5 trailer, we catch a glimpse of a juggalo leader people thinking, uh, leader, leading people think to, oh my god, hold on. Glimpse of juggalo leading people to think <laughs> that you might be able to kill some. I personally do not like jugglos, and my question, what groups of people would you like to be thrown in a video game so you can kill them? Well, dude, uh, well, who wants to get, Juggalos are okay, a good start. That's a very good start. I, I agree with you. I do not like them either. Uh, we'll go around. We'll each name one. Uh, who wants to go first? All right, uh, I'll go. Swaggins. Swaggins. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the hell's a swaggin. It's it's those you know the the douchebags that like dress like fucking Justin Bieber with their hats worn retardedly and their skinny jeans and their high top supras. Yeah, I, I, I thought those were Ewoks. <laughs> Uh, I could kill them all fucking day. I agree. Um, Nikki G, what do you got? Mm, shit, that's like a grocery right, list. Do I only get one? <laughs> uh, I'd probably say Westbrook Brat- oh, Baptist you Church. Took the one I was about to take. Oh, I was about to take. <laughs> that is that a is good a great one. one because nothing more would I like to see. Because those guys are basically villains as they are. I would love nothing more than to kill a bunch of racist, ignorant bastards. I mean, seriously. Westboro Baptist Church is basically the church from Red State. It really is. Like, they really are. It's ridiculous. You know, uh, my, one of my favorite news stories I saw somewhere, and I forget where it was, where the lesbian couple, like, went on a, uh, like, they got married on a Westboro Baptist, like, one of their old dead leaders. They got married on his grave. And then, oh, and then... Oh, it, it was no, the no, founders no. group, like, the... Even better. I got a better one that I just read online. Um... This guy likes to dress up like a Jedi and preach against ignorance. I think I saw you post that. Yeah, yeah I, I did see post that. Up. Yeah, I saw <laughs> your post in there, Nick, and it was just funny as fuck. I'm like, and he go, he went up to their church and he started preaching against them, against their ignorance. With the, like the yeah, Jedi, the Jedi code. code, and then like, dude, this guy, I want to just, oh, this guy is awesome. Um, if I had to pick one, uh, I would probably pick, oddly enough, Bronies. I would pick bronies. Bronies, uh, bronies are hipsters. I would probably, ha- uh, you know, oh, they're really kind of neck and neck on my hatred for them. Of course, being number one hatred, I have to say, is Juggalos. And I am so happy if J- Grandpa Auto lets me kill fucking Juggalos. Um, but, you know, if I had to choose between bronies and hipsters, I see more hipsters. Because bronies at least hide it. They're not always all open about it. But hipsters... It's good. Most yeah, of them are closeted, closeted bronies. bronies. I've only met one, and I work with him. And I, I kind of made fun of him for it when he told me, like, no, it's really a good cartoon. I'm like, dude, you like dick in the ass. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, the hipsters, you see them. You see them a lot. You see them with their little ironic mustache. You see them with their douchebag hat, the skinny jeans, the sh- stupid fucking shirts. You see them everywhere. You see them wearing the fucking scarf. Made me want to chum with it. And I, if I can have a game where I can just choke them to fucking death, I'd be so happy. Um, Good thing we already have a game taking care of the Jersey Shore douchebags. Which one? Oh, Thank you, Tony Rockstar. Payne. Yeah, Max Payne, that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, all right, number two. And le- well, you guys got any other groups you'd like to see in game? Um, annoying oh, children. My. Okay, yes, yes, I have to agree. I have to agree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, and, yeah, children. So, Nick, all right, you might notice there's a little mess, little skip there. Um, but Nick had to leave us, and we had some issues. So, now, we're, you know, we're going to continue with question number two. Yeah, you said, uh, Nick said children. I We kind of went off on that, but we're going to just skip to question number two. Um, question number two, what book or movie would you like to see turn into a video game? Uh, we'll just do one apiece right now, um, since, oh, god damn it, <laughs> god damn it, uh, we lost the recording, so we'll do one apiece, and Nikki G, give us, give us one, now you, what, your t- number one book and or movie you would like to see in a video game. Iliad, or, you know, Troy. Iliad or Troy. 
Yeah. And one has been answered, the other one, we'll see. And I agree with you with that. Uh, the Iliad would be an amazing one. Um, me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to rattle my brain on the number one. See, if you would ask, I would like, you know, honestly, I would like to see a, the a Hobbit movie. Or a game. Yeah. You know, I, I know they made one, but I'd like to see a good one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause so, I mean, another one. The other one was just like a children's game, which, I mean, it was, it was pretty good, but. It wasn't terrible, but you know what? I don't want to, okay, let's put it this way. I want to play, maybe not a Hobbit game, but I want to play a Lord of the Rings game that has nothing to do with the Lord of the Rings movie. You know, so it doesn't follow the as scenes, it has nothing to do with the One Ring. It just has, because Lord of the Rings has a lot of expansive shit to it, and I would love to see, like, something that expands on that, you know? Where you get to play? Oh, it's like it's like the war between the dwarves and the air. You know, whatever. I don't know. What, you know, honestly, I don't know any of the universe after you know besides the ones in the books and such. But I would love to see all that expansive stuff. I would love to see all that. I mean, I think it would be an awesome game. Oh, I mean, hell yeah! I mean, even if you look in the books, I, th- I believe if you scroll back to to the back of the books, you know, it has little timelines on them. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even, you know, after and beforehand, you got a lot of lore, too. You could just, you know, use games for. Yeah, you could do... It, it's a real expansive universe. You can do it when back there used to be a bunch of dragons around. And that, and I also said Game of Thrones would be an excellent one. Um, I would also like to see... Um, this is just me, personally, guys. And this is just kind of my own little thing. I would like to see, uh, like, you know how, you know, we did get a Spartacus game, and it was fun. I enjoyed it, to be honest with you, for a free game. But I would like to see a game that is, like, maybe you play as Spartacus, and as, maybe it's loosely based off the TV show, but basically it starts from beginning to end, where you start out fighting the war, you get captured, and then uh, you get arrested, and you turn into a gladiator for a while, and maybe you make this into a series of games where you start out fighting wars and at the end you get captured. Next game, you're a gladiator fighting, winning battles. And then at the end, you, you know, you escape at the end of the, you know, first game. And then the, you know, third game, you're fighting, you're, you know, re- doing your rebellion. I think that would make it into an amazing series. But, okay. yeah, I'm really into the swords and sandals type of games and movies and stuff and books. I'm really into that fantasy and with swords and, Shield and stuff. Don't get me. Don't get me wrong. I like me some good sci-fi. You know what? I you know what game genre I don't care for, Nikki G. What's that? Modern. I'm not the biggest fan of modern. I mean, I like modern games. There's a lot of games based on modern times I enjoy, like you know Max Payne and all that stuff, and Grand Theft Auto Five. Well, I haven't even played it, but I'm sure I'm gonna like it. But if I had to pick a genre, that's down there. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm. I'm a, I'm alright with it, mm-hmm. but I don't, know, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat with you as you know, swords and shields and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, his third question is yeah. His third question with uh when you we see well basically his third question is saying how we see a bunch of white people white basically the uh, average white protagonist male that you see over and over and over in every video game. Uh. Why, like, do you think we should have different races and stuff? And I say we shouldn't only have different races, but I think we should have different species. And I'm not saying we need to have, like, anthropomorphic animals. No. I think we need to, if we have a sci-fi game, make us play as an alien. Like, they have no humans in it at all. Like, no humans at all have aliens just doing alien stuff. Like, say if I had, like, say Prey 2, even though you're playing as a human Prey 2. Imagine if you weren't playing as a human Prey 2. You were playing as an alien bounty hunter, just bounty hunting aliens. That would be awesome. Um, also, yeah, I, I do think they, you know... And also, if you're playing medieval times, and they kind of already do this anyways, like even Dragon's Crown, you could pick as a dwarf or an elf or anything that are human. Um, that's fine. Uh, that they're, you know, you're seeing this more and more often. We're getting a little bit more expansive. But let's be honest, when you pick a dwarf or an elf or human male, they're all kind of the same fucking shit. <laughs> um, Nick, any thoughts on the first question? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it would, it'd be kind of, it'd be nice. I mean, I'm personally not the kind of guy that, uh, really pays attention mm-hmm. to that kind of stuff. I'm more, you know, looking at the story and just gameplay overall. But, I mean, as long as, like, you know, if, let's say you're taking African American or Latin or Hispanic, mm-hmm. as long as you're not making, I mean, you know, a stereotypical gangster or something like that, 
I mean, unless unless it goes for the, unless it's part of the story, I'm fine with that. But you know, as long as it's not getting too stereotypical, then you know I'm fine with it. You know. But, oh yeah, go keep continuing. No, go ahead. It's fine. Oh okay. I I feel like an asshole anytime I, if I cut you off. Anyway. But um, uh, basically, like a game that you know it's weird because I'm a white person, but I hated playing this game. It was San Andreas, and some people are like, well, you don't like playing as a black man? I was like, no, I have no problem playing with a black man. I, I like, you know, Lee Everett from Walking Dead. He's a great protagonist. I liked playing him a lot. Um, but playing as some gangster, some piece of fucking shit, who all he does is like, oh, yeah, let's go tag some stuff. Let's go, let's go, uh, you know, get some, you know, you know, let's go gang fight this rival gang. I don't give a fuck about that shit. I, I know, you know, a lot of the Grand Theft Autos have been gang stuff, but you know what makes me excited for 5? Is the fact that you're not playing as just some gang member. You're playing as, like, an ex-bank robber, and you're playing as, you know, some, you know, heroin junkie, some piece of worthless shit. You know, I can get with... I can play a piece of shit, but I cannot play... I You know, I have no respect for gangsters. I have to put this in quotes. Because I guess back when I was... High, and actually, more, mostly middle school, because in high school it really just went away... But back in middle school, I saw so many of them. These little wannabe gangsters who live in the suburbs and they just pissed me off. I don't know. Um, yeah, you're, you're not hard just because you can wear some baggy clothes. And I mean, even in Grand Theft Auto Five, you know, the, the, the African American guy we have. I mean, he is kind of in the uh, suburbs and stuff, and he's kind of well. I mean, I can't tell if he's a gangster. I think that he's more of a hustler is what they were talking yeah. about. And even so, you know, he's saying how he's kind of too smart for all that bull crap. Well, so he's looking for somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a guy with a job. He's not, uh, to my knowledge, he doesn't have any prison record or anything like that. Like, the only real piece of shit in Grand Theft Auto Five is going to be, it's going to be the drug addict. The drug addict, drug dealing bastard who, you know, the guy who, he looks like a piece of shit, but... You're going to also have two other main characters. You don't have to spend a full 60, or actually I bet about 30 hours of the game, playing as that one character. Um, and as for my favorite non, you know, generic white dude, I have to say, you know, a little game called, a little game called, you know, fucking Shadows of the Damned had a protagonist. He may have been a little stereotypical, I'm not going to lie. They may have actually borderline racism but god damn is he awesome his name is garcia hotspur and basically he's a demon hunter who's going into hell to find his girlfriend and if you have not played this game you guys really highly suggest you play it It is so fucking crazy and really a lot of fun it's it's really just a blast uh nick what is yours uh you kind of said it was lee everett i mean it's one of those things where it's kind of well you know you kind of choose your path in that game but Uh Overall, I mean, I just like the overall character, you know, it's, and just the, you know, even though you choose a different path, you kind of follow the same line mm-hmm. and stuff, the same story, but, you know, basically, I mean, either way you go, you're going to like him, basically, and he's just an overall kind of better character that you just like. You know what I really liked about Lee Everett a lot is the fact that his race really didn't matter. I mean, there's a couple times in the Walking Dead game where, you know, because you're in the South, you kind of, you kind of like, come up to a guy, you don't like me because I'm black, don't you? Like, you kind of try to pull the race card on him. But for the most part, his race never comes into question. And I'm seeing this more and more happen in today, today's age. Um, I'm really getting happy with this, how society, you know, it doesn't fucking matter if, you know, he's white, black, brown, you know, whatever. Male, female, you, as long as you just can tell a good story, that's what's going to really immerse me into your universe. Um, the only, you know what, the, actually, in my opinion, is the most offensive to race, Nick? What's that? When you play Mass Effect and you make a black character and he still sounds like a white dude. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's kind of offensive. I'm like. So what? every African American newscaster out there? Well, yeah, basically, I mean, he sounds exactly like normal White Shepherd. I'm like, uh, dude, you couldn't, you, you, you have all these other voice actors. You couldn't have gotten, like, a guy who sounds a little bit more African American. Because I'll admit, I did make a black character once. And that kind of goes against usually what I do. But I, in Mass Effect, I made so many fucking characters. But I made a black character once. And he, I couldn't, you know, he sounded like, you know, you or I. I was like, what the, f- no, 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 no. This is, this is. I'm not saying black people can't sound white, but you can't have a different, you know, I, you know, but 
God damn it. I, I feel like I'm going on a really <laughs> dangerous... I'm like, I feel like I'm walking on some icy road right now. Yeah, uh, watch uh, out. Well, he's getting on his white suit. I'm just going to sit on that stop. porch. I'm going to stop before I get, like, you know, some racism shit against me. Um, we'll just go on to question number four, um, which I like this a lot. What is the biggest fail in a game with in real life? Wait. What is the biggest fail in a game and in real life you've ever seen? Um, all right. Let's see here. Ooh. I don't know. Got one for... Okay, let's go with biggest fail in video game right now. <laughs> the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of up there. Um, I think... What? I think for game... I, I think I said it before, but it was on WoW, and, you know, I was a rogue, and these are like... You're pretty much like you're a ninja... And sometimes your first attack could, is pretty much, it's pretty devastating to whoever you're fighting. So basically there's capture the flag, uh, hit the guy, brings him down maybe like three fourths of his health, and there's another rogue right in front of me, and that person just let the flag carry run right past, you know, even this person wasn't that geared, but even they would have been able to kill this person from the amount I took off of him, so. And I just let him run, run right past him, and I was just, I was pretty pissed at that moment. I was like, god damn it. Nice. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of my biggest fail in a video game. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to keep it simple because I can't think of any off the top of my head. It's any time I'm fighting or doing something and I accidentally roll off an edge. <laughs> uh, I feel like such a retard because I like it usually happens with those the action like those you know the hack and slash action games where I'll be fighting and all of a sudden I'm just I do a you know, stick and move, and all of a sudden that stick and move was right off the ledge. Um, actually, the, the biggest fail right now, I just got, I just figured it out. I was playing Dark Souls, and I think I might have told this story before. Um, I was playing Dark Souls, fighting one of the first mini bosses, and he knocks me off the edge, killing me. But immediately after, he falls off the edge as well, uh, and dies. So I actually beat that boss and said, You had killed the bridge demon or whatever. I beat him because he fell off the edge with his second swing. And I was like, ah, oh, that's a fail. And I don't know, what uh, biggest fail real life, in real life there, Nick? Ooh, let's see. Uh, uh, so I agreed to do podcast. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, oh yeah, I know one. Um, it was back in middle school. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think you went to, you went, did you go to Shadow Ridge? No, I didn't. Uh, well, basically, uh, it was during, it was winter, and we live here in Colorado, so you know you get a lot of snow during winter, and so the, everyone comes in entrance, entrance, way, entrance ways at the beginning of you know school. I imagine that's just common sense, but uh, so basically everyone tracks in the snow and it melts inside, and so I'm walking to band class because you know I'm the popular kid. And <laughs> he was rolling in the pussy. No, <laughs> especially in middle school. No, <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, so basically, you know, they have the you know wet floor signs up, and so I see this girl walk by, and she just goes, she looks at the wet floor sign, and l- literally just says out, "Oh, wet floor! I better not run." So she starts to run, and she literally just smacks her face into the ground. <laughs> and all her books, everything just goes flying across the floor, and you know, I would have stopped to help her. But that was just natural selection. <laughs> you know, that, she, she wouldn't have learned anything if I just would have helped her. Exactly. That's that's a good, very good point there, Nick. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, biggest fail in real life. Uh, did you see E3? No. <laughs> <laughs> see what Microsoft did. Uh, they kind of screwed the pooch there. Um, that's a big. That's a really, in my opinion, one of the biggest fails. But if you want to go with in my life, biggest fail, uh, just because I feel like telling the story. Uh, there was this kid back in middle school. He, he was trying to bully me, but he wasn't bigger than me or anything. He would just try it. And then one day, he tried to have one of his friends push me and do... You know that whole trick where you, like, you know, be on your hands and knees, you push someone and you... Tabletop yeah, or whatever tabletop. like that. Well, he tried doing that to me, and he was going to be at the table, and his friend pushes me. What ends up happening, my back foot kicks him in the face. He's over there. His <laughs> nose is bleeding. He's crying. I'm laughing. I was just like, because I didn't trip. I just backed up and bam... Uh, it was just a natural just thing, and I was just like, and I started laughing. I was like, "You fucking retard!" Um, that that was that's a good fail right there. Just shows kids if you're gonna be a bully, don't be a stupid one. 
<laughs> no, no, your physics. No, your physics. Just no. Maybe the tabletop's not the best. And uh, all right, you have we have a, a five questions, but we're coming up on our twenty minutes. So, Jason, you know what I'm going to do for you? We're going to save that question for next week because, well, you're the. <laughs> it's not like we have like an ass load of questions we have to choose from. So, we're going to save your number, uh, your fifth question for next week. Because we're coming up on our hour, so uh, all I can say is, oh, fucking, this recording software pisses me off. And uh, like us on Facebook if you'd like. I mean, it just lets you know on the updates of the site. Visit our website, bloodscreen.weebly.com, if you would like to comment like Jason does. And just, you know, let us know on your opinion on all these matters. You know, I, you know, I am always down to have a nice, friendly discussion like you saw at the beginning of this show with me and Nick. About how he is a freaking moron for thinking the way he thinks sometimes. And if you'd also like to tell Nick that he's wrong about how Final Fantasy works and how it's not one continuous story, please let him know. I, I will definitely rub it in his nose. Um, because that dude does not want to believe me. <laughs> um, and last but not least, don't forget to subscribe so you can constantly... We get shit coming out every day. Unless a Sunday happens where Nikki G's out of town and the other two are never free Sundays usually. Um, and Saturday because that's my day off from this. So, yeah. Otherwise, that is it, everybody. Good night.